Let me ask you about student loan debt uh, because uh, this is also a critical issue. We've got midterm elections coming up uh, in uh, about uh, uh, six months. Uh, uh, President Joe Biden, his, his numbers among young voters have fallen through the floor. His numbers among, Af among African Americans are down. Uh, people are saying, hey, how have Democrats delivered? Now, a lot of things that y'all delivered in the House, but it's been blocked uh, in the Senate. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. So I, when all these people uh, come at me saying, well, the CBC hasn't done anything, I remind them that you only have two CBC members in the Senate, but you have most of them in the House. And they, these bills, George Floyd Justice Act got passed in the House. Uh, all the, numerous other bills got passed in the House, but they're not in the Senate. And so uh, I've heard you, I've heard Senator Elizabeth Warren and others say the president has the authority to cancel student loan debt. Why won't he? What I'm trying to understand, what is the holdup? Yeah, well, first of all, let me just say this. We are closer than ever before to getting this done. And canceling student debt, since you uh, contextualize it, it within the midterms, is, is both good policy and good politics. Because it's our job as lawmakers to be responsive to the needs of people, where there is hardship to alleviate it, we're in the business of solving problems. This is a nearly $2 trillion crisis. And the, the, the multi-racial uh, generational movement which made this Democratic majority possible was comprised of issues-based activists, many of them uh, who wanted action on student debt cancellation. And myself, Leader Schumer, Senator Warren, Rep. Omar, and others, we've been leading this fight. We were successful in getting the administration to put a pause on student loan payments during the pandemic, three pauses. And we saw people, I heard from many, especially uh, black folk, uh, Roland, who used those monies instead to remain safely housed, to purchase essential goods. Some became first-generation home buyers. We see the presidents of HBCUs using federal funds, the ARPA funds, to cancel debt. And we know that our HBCUs have been chronically and woefully underfunded. All the needs that they have from infrastructure A to Z, and they're using those funds to cancel student debt, which proves it's a racial justice issue. Black students have 85% takeout loans, and then we are five times more likely to default. Black women carry the most debt, are burdened by the most, 20% more than our white counterparts, 50% uh, more than white men. Joe Biden has the authority. We're closer than ever before. He has signaled that he will cancel some debt. And I'm going to keep uh, banging the drum for broad-based student debt uh, cancellation by $50,000, because that will support the uplift of 80% of those in the lowest income brackets. Roland, there was a false narrative saying this was regressive in impact. It was only going to benefit white graduate students who went to affluent institutions. That is a complete falsehood. This, like everything else, like everything else, the burden falls the heaviest on white Americans. And because of policies like redlining, our families didn't get to build generational wealth. We borrow the most. We default the most. This is an economic justice issue. It's a racial justice issue. And it will jumpstart the economy, Roland. It's an effective strategy um, as we begin to round the corner and head into a recovery from this pandemic-induced recession. It doesn't, And it doesn't require one vote from Congress. One vote, unilateral action, executive stroke of a pen. So just do it, Joe. Just do it. Uh, well, what is strange to me is when I listen to uh, folks on the right uh, who say that, uh, well, oh, my mom worked hard to send me to college uh, and we should be paying these folks' debts off. Um, didn't the federal government forgive a ton of PPP loans? Didn't the federal government um, give our financial institutions trillions of dollars or access to trillions during the economic crisis. So I, I'm, I'm just, it, it's just really interesting when I listen. I mean, look, the proposal to send $40 billion to Ukraine. I'm, I'm just saying, if, if we're willing to send billions to Ukraine, how is it that we're unwilling to actually say, let's help American students with debt? Roland. It's society that maintains that we live in a meritocracy. And they told black folks that education is the great equalizer. And if we pursued higher education, we would close the racial wealth gap. It has only exacerbated it. 
The fact that our families did not have equitable access to the GI Bill, the impact of, of policies, discriminatory policies like redlining, we borrow more, we default more, we're saddled by more, he can do something about it, economic justice issue, racial justice issue, and it's a winning issue. It's responsive to the needs of the coalition which elected this president. This is a hardship burdening people from every walk of life. Roland, I have parents saying I am in my upper 60s, I cannot retire because I signed Parent PLUS loans for my kid. Or I'm still paying on my loans and now I'm paying on my kids' loans. 76-year-olds in my district, so fixed income, still paying student loans. A whole generation that can't start a family, grow a family, purchase a home, start a business. So this $2 trillion debt is choking at the promise of this country. And finally, Roland, for those people that would say, well, I, I paid my way. Look, the price of higher education has increased by 150 percent. Well, not only that, I also remind people that, like, in uh, New York, the city colleges of New York, it used to be free. So it's a whole well, generation, I, it's a whole I, generation I, of white people who actually got college degrees for free. Well, and that's right, but that's why we have to invest in education as the public good that it is. We do need tuition-free college. We do need to expand Pell Grants. We do need to invest in our HBCUs. So this is not the whole problem, but this is a bold step in the right direction. And listen, Roland, at first, this was an issue they really marginalized. And as I said, there was a false narrative about it. But we have been vigilant in our advocacy. We have lifted the voices of those who've been burdened by this debt, and we are closer than ever before to getting this done. All right. Congressman Yana Presley, always glad to have you on the show. Welcome back anytime. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. A real um, revolutionary right now. Wow. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Thank <laughs> you.